to another featured garage vlog. Today I am going to be doing something a little different with you guys. Um, I've got another engine that's just been laying around. I've slowly been cleaning over time. So I'm going to get some more work done with that tonight. And, uh, and I think while I'm doing that, you know, instead of just showcasing a video of cleaning engine parts, let's just hang out and talk. Um, I, I, think, uh, I think I'll talk with you guys about the history of the CRX, its purpose and my ownership, and the future for it. So yeah, let's just, let's just do that. Let's just hang out and talk. How about that? Love it. All right, this is the VAT. The VAT is plastic. The VAT is a plastic container that I got from Walmart years ago, and I filled it up with gallons and gallons of Berryman Chem Dip. The stuff that you can get at an auto parts store or Walmart. Years ago, Zach and I actually went out to all the Walmarts within a, about a 60 mile radius and bought all the chem dip we could, which wasn't a whole lot, but I think it was something like $10 cheaper than all the auto parts stores. And I used this to clean all of my engine parts, blocks, heads, and everything in between. And uh, I'll show you the, the results of what this bat can do. So this engine is a, it's a D15 B7 that I picked up for free a while ago. Um, the guy that owned it said the engine was kaput and I can just have it and use it for whatever parts I needed off of it. Once I tore it down, I discovered um, the reason it didn't work was the combustion chambers were just caked with carbon. Uh, the electrode and the grounding strap of the spark plugs were, were now one from all, just all the carbon buildup. So I could see why the engine didn't fire off, but everything else in it is great. It, it, the crank is in fantastic condition. The cylinders look amazing even. I mean, just once you clean everything off and get all the carbon off, this engine looks great. So um, yeah, it's totally usable. One, two, three, four. Uh-oh, uh there's no more. All right, so there's one D15 B7 block out of the vat and hose down with a pressure washer. I'll kind of just go over it real quick and get some of the, the gunk out of the pits and then um, uh, seal it up and, and store it away until I'm ready to hone it and do whatever else I want to with this block. So real quick while my hands are still clean, um, here, here's an example of what things look like as they come out of the vat and uh, get wiped down. So this is a piston and rod from that uh, D15 V7. And like I mentioned earlier, the, everything in the engine is in great shape. Um, so these are cleaned and, and ready for whatever. I will not be using these uh, because whatever ends up happening with that block, um, it's, it's going to involve a lot more power than these little toothpick rods and dainty pistons can handle. So, but no, it's, it's, it's great. It's great to have that bat in my garage so you know I have the luxury of cleaning things to perfection in my own home and I don't have to you know outsource that or, or spend a whole lot of time scrubbing I just I typically let parts soak overnight and the next day I, I wipe them down and and then bag them until they're they're ready to go into something so uh, a couple of years ago I was actually cruising down the streets in my six fall in my four-door 91 Honda Civic and it was great. I mean, it, it got me everywhere I needed to go reliably. It got fantastic gas mileage. But my God, it was boring to drive. I mean, you know, there are some cars you get in and you're like, oh boy, I can't wait to drive it. It's gonna be a great cruise or, or whatever. And that's not the case with the, this 91 Civic with a, you know, a D15, what, prob probably one of these. I mean, it was just painfully slow. And handling, what? Well, what is that? It doesn't do that. Um, but again, it, it, served, it served its purpose. My VTAC is best VTAC because I'm an active member on the forums. So, I, I was done with that car. It did what it needed to do and I just wanted something a little more, but I wasn't ready to, I mean at the time, and I still have it, um, I, I have, you know, a 2009 Mustang with a bunch of stuff done to it. So, you know, I, I had a car that was totally capable of, of being fun. Um, I also autocross that car regularly. So I, I definitely had a car that I kind of fun with, but I just didn't want a really boring daily driver. So I put it up on Craigslist for trade. It's like, hey, somebody just make me an offer. Um, I don't really have anything set in mind. 
So, the guy that actually owned the, 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 the Civic that I had two owners ago saw it and he said, whoa, dude, I used to own that. I have the CRX, you wanna trade? And I'm thinking, hmm, CRX. Still has a really slow engine, but it's, it's a CRX. It's a really cool, iconic, you know, Japanese hatchback. So I said, absolutely. And that day, actually, I got off of work, drove over to his house, and we, we did the trade right there. Now I have this totally cool CRX, but as you see in the pictures, it, it, was, it was far from cool. It was rough. I mean, it looked like crap. It had been, it had front end damage. The engine was on its way out. But I, I knew that going into this trade. I knew that I was trading a car that was tip top, ready to go, for a car that was nope, nope, not at all. And uh, that was okay. So, so I got it, and I think the second day of ownership, I actually pulled the engine out of it so I can go ahead and rebuild it. Now at the time, uh, that day, I didn't have any intentions of doing anything outlandish like, you know, strapping a big turbo to it and, and making a fast car. But that, I think I made that decision a week later. I was like, you know what, why not? You know, these Honda parts, these Honda engines and, and all of its components are really cheap. Um, I, I could build this engine right for not a lot of money and have a whole lot of fun. So that's the route that I went. Hey, so what have you done to your car? Uh, game only, bro. The combination that I ended up doing was I had a D15 B2. I pulled it out. Um, since it needed work, the, the cylinder walls were heavily pitted. I got it bored 20 thousandths over. And uh, from there, I put H-beam rods in it. I put um, oversized Vitara pistons in it. I did a head swap on it. I put a D16 Y8 head on it. Um, put Ferreira flat face valves in it. The, the valves in it were just junk, so I wanted to get new valves. and. Um, I just, I got Ferreira valves because, and, uh, and I, all that, and I had a, um, a two layer, multi-layer steel gasket. The, the OEM Honda head gaskets are three layer multi-layer steel gaskets. Um, so I just cut the middle layer out. So that in conjunction with the flat face valves and the now larger pistons, all of that added up to just a little more compression ratio. Once I got it all put together and I took it out for the first time, oh man, that was a blast. It was so much fun. That, just that combination, you know, um, with that, that head swap and, and all those other parts in it, made for a really fun little car. I mean, it zipped around very well, just as it was. Oh, I should also mention that um, it wasn't a very good idea at the time, but I also had the cam timing advanced or retarded whichever way, I don't remember, by two teeth. So that's like nine degrees of advance or retard, whichever way it goes. Pretty significant. And as you'll soon find out, that led to the car's demise. So it ripped around really good, made whatever power it made, it was lots of fun. And then eventually I scored all kinds of turbo goodies for cheap. I got uh, an eBay T04E60 trim, way too big for that engine, for 20 bucks. And a manifold and just all kinds of other parts necessary for a turbo build for cheap. All used, mind you, from a guy that was moving away and just had to offload all of this stuff. So I picked all that up and I put it on there and injectors and then I, um, what did I do? I was tuning it through chrome and um, yeah so and it was fun man it was this this engine with six pounds of boost running through this t 40 60 trim it was just so much fun um, and uh, so one day the owner of Hardway Performance uh, Ryan Milliken he uh, they, they had a dyno installed at their new location at the time the new location and, uh, and he hits me up on Facebook and he says, hey, when you got to dyno the CRX? And so I'm thinking, oh cool, dyno time, tomorrow. And so uh, that night, I went ahead and cranked up the boost pressure to 14 PSI, just why not? Hey guys, I just got my first car. It's a 90 whatever Honda Civic, and it sure smokes a lot, but I was wondering, what size turbo do you guys think would be best for my car? Use the search function, noob. Really with no regard, you know, just willy-nilly turning up the boost and half-ass tuning on the street. It did that and holy crap was it fast. I mean, I, this car was just insane. You know, it, it properly put you in your seat, 
you're just spinning tires and, and it's and it's just moving in a straight line, mind you. That's all it could do. But it was great. And uh, I was like, holy crap, this, this is gonna make fantastic numbers on the dyno. We never, I never got numbers from that day. So we were still trying to, to get a signal, an RPM signal um, on that dyno. And at the time, the engine was just all over the place in the engine bay. I mean, it had the stock engine mounts in it, shot, destroyed, and only three out of four. So, I mean, it was just not a recipe for success. Well, it actually ended up blowing um, the ring lands gave out on the dyno with, you know, the, the higher compression, higher than, I don't know, whatever it would have been with just the Vitara pistons. And the, the two layer gasket, the valves, the, the bigger pistons, and uh, the super advanced cam timing. I mean, this thing was just, it was not gonna last long and it didn't. we noticed that things were not going well. I mean, there's coolant coming out, it's smoking, and, and by that point, I realized, okay, this isn't good, and it's, it's done at this point. Something seriously wrong has happened. I really just wanted to see a number. The car was already messed up at this point, you know, and it's gonna have to be torn apart and rebuilt, so let's see if we can't get some kind of number, because it's still kind of holding together. That didn't happen. The car sounded miserable after I pulled it off the dyno, and somehow I drove it home that night. I mean, it wasn't happy about it, but I drove home. Um, next day, I, I discovered the ring lands were gone, um, and uh, I, I had to rebuild it at that point. Hey guys, my car doesn't start. Any ideas on what the problem is? Uh, your birth was a problem. So I did end up rebuilding it um, with. I had a different block. Um, same rods, same crank, I had to obviously get different pistons, put it all together, um, I didn't change the, the head gasket this time, I got just a stock head gasket, I left all three layers in there, and I just didn't want to mess around, and I left the cam timing stock, you know, just at top dead center, and, uh, and it's been dead reliable since. Um, I am running a different turbo, I've gone through a few different turbos to try to find the one that I want in this application, and I mean, it's just... It's been thousands of miles now, just beating on the car, and you know it's making you know nothing really to write home about, but 237 horsepower and 216 pound-feet of torque at the wheels, and that's a lot from a car that came from the factory with 92 crank horsepower. That's that's pretty okay, and it's pretty quick. It's fun, and and it, it still does the job. It gets me to work every day. Okay, guys, I'm gonna do my big build now. I'm gonna do a Y7 stroker. I'm going to put the biggest turbo on it that I can find, probably something from a Caterpillar engine. I heard some guy named Rob Dom put one in his RX-7. Don't those just have a 1.3 liter wanker engine? It should be good with my engine, even though I haven't looked at the compressor map. My question is, what's the cheapest clutch I can use to hold 500 horsepower? That's my goal. It's just some arbitrary number I pulled out of thin air. But uh, hey, YOLO! Uh, you're the reason daddy drinks! Okay, so what what does the future hold for this car, um, power plant wise? I don't really know yet. Um, there is an alphabet of very good Honda engines that I could use. Um, uh, the, the first three that come to mind are D, and I know that's not very good. B, okay, getting better, and K. Obviously K is the engine you want to put in whatever thing you want to use that's Honda powered. And I could do that, I absolutely could. Um, but you know, I, I kind of have a thing for D-series engines and I don't know why. Maybe it's because I like, um, you know, fighting an uphill battle. I don't know. Um, it's a, <laughs> you know, this, it's a 1.5 liter engine. And, uh, and you know what, maybe that's why I like it because when, when I'm talking to people about the car or after um, I may or may not be playing around on the street with people and, and they ask, well, what's in that thing anyway? Oh, it's a 1.5 liter D-series engine. You know, the reaction that, that they have from that is, it's, it's kind of cool, you know, to see them like, what? 
that did what just happened? That's kind of interesting. Um, so I don't know, I really don't know, but what I do know, and I really want to do this, um, I want that CRX to be all-wheel drive once I've done the final form build for it. I really, really want that. Um, this is the first performance car that I've built that was front-wheel drive, and I'm just, I'm honestly not really a fan. Um, after autocrossing it and drag racing it, it's just not the... Okay, so you know, a rear-wheel drive platform is fantastic in, in that it's, it's fun. It's very fun to autocross. Um, it's obviously a lot easier to drag race because, uh, you know, with weight transfer happening, it just makes things go faster, better. Um, front wheel drive, front wheel drive is definitely an uphill battle to go fast in a straight line. Now I have had, I've had one all wheel drive car in the past and it was, it was a different kind of fun. It was the sort of fun where, uh, you know, you could, you could mash the gas at any point in a corner and be okay. You're not going to oversteer. You're probably not going to understeer, depending on the the power um, distribution from front to rear. But um, all-wheel drive is a different kind of fun. It's not as exciting, I would say, as a, a two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive car. But it's definitely a different kind of fun. And I really, really would like to see that happen in the CRX. Um, plus, that would just be another wow factor. And and and. In that car, you know, once it's at this beautiful, you know, perfected state, it's also a turbocharged whatever engine all-wheel drive car. That's that's cool. So, yeah, that's that's kind of the the tentative plan. The car will be restored one day and be just beautiful and perfect and powered by something I don't know yet, and definitely probably all-wheel drive. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Happy Friday, and uh, stay tuned for next week. Um, I'm gonna have some more videos out for you then, hopefully with more burnouts or fire. Um, Disco's face should be back in your face here soon, so stay tuned for that. I know you guys love him, he loves you too. So just stick around, we'll have some more good content for you. And uh, in the meantime, go ahead and hit up FeatureGarage.com. Be sure to check out the Facebooks, the Instagrams, and the YouTubes. And if you like this video, it would actually help us if you, if you clicked the like button on the YouTube and, uh, and shared it or, or whatever. Um, I, I always thought that sounded kind of corny when other YouTubers would say that, but it turns out it actually does kind of help you. So um, it, if you like it and you want to see more cool stuff and, and, and if you want to help us grow a little bit, just like and share. It's all you got to do. So cool. Until next time. <laughs>